Mm, he vicious. We here at Hall's Hot Rods, man, in Vegas. Also slash Swap Time in Vegas. Swap Time does all the electrical stuff for like your LT motors, your LS motors, and Hall's Hot Rods, he does it all from General, Re General Lee's to 55's. I can't wait to see it, looking forward to it. My boy Josh, let's go check him out. Rest to reality. Ooh, he vicious. This is Josh, man, from Hall's Hot Rods. How's it going? One of my good buddies, man, and uh, he gonna walk us through a couple of his cars and show us what he do up here. Which one you wanna see first? Let's check out the 55. All right, so the 55. Sorry, actually, I just got this one loaded up. It's headed to Tennessee. Um, 55 Chevrolet two-door coast, taking out the bare metal. It was blasted, everything was clean. Original California car, so it wasn't a lot of rust. Replaced a couple things. Uh, did the dash from the interior. Again, sorry about all the boxes and everything, but it's all pretty much getting ready to load up and go to uh, uh, go to Tennessee. Actually, one of my good friends, it's funny, this is the third car I've sold to Tennessee. Just loaded up with spare parts, man. The guy can pick out what he wants to keep and everything else. I guess he'll just put it on Craigslist or whatnot. Let me clean the front off real quick, though. My buddy brought a bunch of food over earlier. Ooh, got, got some donuts. That's all for you, baby. You know I can't eat that, man. I sure need it. Got some starving mechanics over there we're trying to feed. How y'all doing today? Good, good, you? Man, super blessed, man. How's the project coming? Great, great, great. Got that truck running yet? Um, the 55? Mm -hmm. No, we took it all apart even more. We boxing the frame up. And... <laughs> so my, my brother got me playing uh, hopscotch. We're we going back and forth with the build. So on this, Matt actually hooked me up with a small block 350, but I did it all kind of like period correct. Uh, I guess how it would be in the 60s if you were to see this car on the street. Just a set of headers, small block 350, it's a Jasper motor. It's got uh, roller rockers on it, a little bit of a cam. Did, uh, it's got upgraded suspension, steering, pretty much everything if you're just gonna drive it every day, but I still try to keep that look, and the guy was happy with it. So literally the first guy that actually saw it on Facebook Marketplace just bought it. I was like, all right, we'll send it down the road. It's tough though, because this is like the one car I've always wanted for myself. But you see how busy the shop is right now, and I just didn't really have time to work on you know, my own things. But you got a lot of toys. I do have a lot of toys. Too many. <laughs> Not as many as you. Yeah, right. I got some toys. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, but yeah, and honestly, the hard part on this thing's done. Frames finished. The underneath is flawless. Uh, <coughs> Stainless gas tank, suspension front and rear, four wheel disc brakes, curry rear end. I mean, you could legit put a drive shaft and a fuel system in this thing and drive it up. Well, you probably want to put a windshield in it, but yeah. Which a lot of guys, man, they're, they're building these beaters, kind of like a field car, where everything underneath is dialed in, but the outside's kind of needs a little bit of love. But I figured instead of me painting it, I'll let him choose the paint color that he wants and just kind of go with it. Yeah, I like did you change the bolt pattern or anything? All that came. All no, it's all five lug. I just put the period correct. I love these wheels. I had to look. These are Anson Sprint wheels that these things were had on the factory, like in the fifties. And I had to go through a lot of swap meets to find those. Yeah. And, um, and I so I, you got them staggered. I did. Yep. yep. I got the deep ones on the back. Yep. Shot ones on the front. So only thing I had to do to clear 14 inch rims with that setup, I had to uh, grind a little bit of the spindle down. It's two inch drop spindles, but. You know with cars, you always got to tweak a little bit. So. Yes, sir. I wish I had this on the lift, though, because if you look underneath, like the bottom side of this car is pretty tits. Nice, nice. And this is the Colorado we've been working on. Uh, I'm probably actually going to list this as we... Let's get some space. <laughs> this is a 2005 Chevy Colorado that was featured in uh, SEMA, the car show out here in Vegas. Uh, two years. Andrew over at Industry Auto Design, he does interior. He does pretty much everything. He built this truck from the ground up, bought it brand new. It's got 51,000 miles on it, and then it started, it had a rod knock really bad, so he just quit driving it. So I bought it from him, 
pulled that little teeny motor out and I put a all aluminum Chevrolet V8 in it and six-speed automatic this thing hauls mail I was gonna use it as a shop truck but again insurance on this damn thing is one of my daily drivers <laughs> Damn. The daily driver the one I want to buy? No, 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 no. Well, you got to be more specific. You already bought about three or four of my cars. The Chevelle, man. I want the Chevelle. The Chevelle. No. He won't send me the Chevelle, y'all. Insurance on them old cars is cheap, baby. You know that. Uh, but yeah, same thing. I, I, I build these cars pretty much like I'm going to keep them, and then I just end up selling them. But the quality's better that way, you know? build stuff like you're gonna hang on to it but um I still I got to clean up a little bit of the wiring a few things and it's kind of dusty but I try to keep everything as, as factory looking as possible um, a lot of times people get a little loose with intake setups and radiator mount stuff like that so this thing if you were to if they were to offer a V8 Colorado this year this is kind of what it looks like besides the cold air intake even used the uh, Mitch um, over here he wired up basically a harness that goes I use the engine computer off a of 2008 Silverado but it communicates to the stock body computer for this truck so you gauges work speedometer RPM all that stuff and it'll pass smog too so when you take it to the DMV hope DMV don't see this but it still registers as a inline 5 you know Chevrolet pickup truck a little bit more oomph to it we know in Vegas wiring and tuning is a major major thing Big money in that. I hear. Big money in that for sure. <laughs> so if you need something done, you can always come check my boy out yep. here at Hall's Hot Rods and also at Swap Time. Yep. Two guys that they can really get it done. So there's some good there's some good information, buddy. Now you know we need to talk about that General Lee, man. We gotta talk about it, man. Yep, let's talk about it. Okay, uh before we even go over there, those is watching. They're waiting for it. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> he smiled. The, the the show was it, it was it was it was given to me as a child. I fell in love with it. I used to say yeehaw too. Mm -hmm. Little did I know all the stuff that went along with the stuff that's come along now. So we didn't know that. But the genuine thing about this conversation is, me and him have no issues, nothing. My cameraman, he's like my brothers for real. Yeah. We have genuine love with each other. We joke, Facetime, call. First time I met him, he, he said. Me and you, we gon' we gonna keep talking. He knew it off top. Country as hell. Yeah, a little bit. But I feel like I've been knowing him 10 years, man. 15 years. This dude, solid dude so far. So so far. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously though, on a serious note, we uh we just have had discussions about this general lease, so it's like a real thing. He's had friends um like comment different things to him and Man, I don't see a prejudice going nowhere in him. So he just happened to love the car like I would love the car. I wanted one to build one just to build one. When I was into building the things that I wanted as a kid, that was one of the cars I always wanted because that's what I seen growing up. So man. And, tell us about it, man. Well, so I, and the same thing. When I was growing up, man, I watched Dukes of Hazard. That was my favorite TV show. And I don't think you could even think of like a more iconic car i mean there's like the batmobile and the delorean but there's also the general lee i would see one at a car show and i was just like man i just one of these days and i, I worked hard enough and i was fortunate enough to find one i had to fly to canada to buy that car um paint on it's 30 years old it's original big block 68 charger um i had to fly to oregon and then get a rental car to go four hours to take some stranger a backpack full of money. I honestly thought I was like, this is the last human being I'm ever gonna see because it was nine o'clock at night. The dude was six <laughs> foot five. He had a gun. And I'm like, this dude's just gonna shoot me in the woods and nobody's gonna see me. But luckily that didn't work out. So if you're watching too, I appreciate you not murdering me uh over this car. <laughs> but no, I got it, I had it shit back here. And this was a uh, timeline, you know, the past six months things have gotten have gotten tough here in the United States. But I uh I, I still I was I was building a thing for two years. It's it's almost done. And yeah, there are, there's, uh, you know, some of my friends are a little bit torn on that flag on top. And I understand that too, but you said that's kind of the point. As long as you understand how people can be offended and then just talk about it as friends, which is what we did, that's right. fine. So all I've been doing so far, it still needs interior. Uh, still got to do a few tweaks. I'm actually building another motor for it. But I just want to get it done and just do some smoky burnouts with it. And right. just, you know, right. just have a little fun. So that's another car I'm never going to sell. Not a price tag on it, but uh, 
it's all labor love, I guess. You know, you got cars that aren't for sale too, right. like that Nico Camaro. I know you ain't gonna get rid of it. No, but I, can't, I can't let it go. Can't but no, but I, I, I did. I, I appreciate your input on that because your your opinion on that meant a lot. And some people, uh, my girlfriend, the first time that she saw that car, I told her I was gonna go get it. She just said, "You're not parking that in front of my house," because she's never seen Dukes of Hazard. She just saw an old hot rod with a big fucking hillbilly Confederate flag on it. But then once I told her about the show and she got to see it, she kind of understood the, the importance behind it. Yeah, let's take. I'll show it to you. So, yes, '68 Charger. It's a big block Mopar, and the thing I like about this car was it. You know, the paint's not perfect on it, and I kind of like that, so I'm not going to be afraid to drive it. And I, I didn't want to paint. So it's a big block Mopar, but my thoughts of what I wanted to do, I'm building a stroker motor for it, it's at the machine shop right now, but I literally, I wanted to have basically everything from here down, completely nut and bolt detailed, flawless, perfect, show car quality, but still the rest of this have patina, if you want to call it patina, or just kind of like the shittiness around it, but just dialed in engine bay, dialed in interior, I want the frame underneath to be spotless. But I still want just kind of like the roughness of everything yeah. kind of beat up on the outside. I want it to look like it was in the show. Exactly. <laughs> so it, because every time you see a General Lee, you either find a '68 Charger where there's nothing left that somebody wants 20 grand for, or it's a nut and bolt restoration. You never see one that looks like they've actually been driven. Um, I got TMI seats that I bought for it. Uh, my boy at the upholstery shop down there I actually redid the back seat to make it all match. Um, I got a shifter from uh, actually some of my boys. Um, Sidewinder shifter. I really love those things and my buddy at off-road designs got that shifter for me But it's just little by little again. This is my personal car. So I work on it when I can But I'm looking hopefully maybe by the end of the month having the engine done having it all in and then just, just I do have it. a question What's up? So you say you're gonna stroke it. Yep. You are talking about a Dodge motor, correct? Yeah He's stroking a Dodge motor. He's not putting a Chevy motor in there. I know. He's stroking the, a big there was, boy. There, there was talk. There so was talk Mopar people about the shit a frisbee right now but there was talk of me putting an ls motor in this with mopar valve covers like basically making it look like a 440 even okay. to the point of a fake distributor on the side but having like a, a big cubic inch ls motor which hindsight probably would have been cheaper right um but man i don't know it's well, just as much uh as much as we love these ls motors i know you've done a few swaps too it's just when you get like an old school big block just the way they sound and the way they run i feel like even guys our age are going towards the new stuff but you still got to keep a little bit of that around for like the younger generation to see what it's like to be in a big block with like 600 foot pounds of torque right now, it'll probably just end up breaking shit but you know then we'll fix that as we go i personally would think that he would put a hellcat motor here or something that's what i was thinking I i'm was hoping i'm, he was I'm actually like building another 68 charger that's not a general lead for one of my best friends and we're doing a hellcat swap and we're probably gonna start in about a month Ooh, see discovery i know but the problem with that is doing, baby. i'm talking just a roundabout budget we're talking for anybody that's wanting to do this yeah. you can buy a hellcat motor online right now motor and transmission for twelve thousand dollars it's going to cost you about an extra 20 grand yeah. to get that thing in and driving so thirty two thousand dollars for an engine once this is all done and i'll share numbers i'll probably have about about eight grand in this motor and it's a 512 mopar roller cam probably about probably 680 horsepower to the back wheels and that with a little baby shot of nitrous i'll run a hellcat any day so i might get about five miles to the gallon but it'll hold it up i definitely want to go ride in this i'm gonna need to put a passenger seat in i already got my noise i already got the noise i'm gonna do it while we ride i'm yeehawing the whole time let me hear one <laughs> let me hear one hey but you know what mm -hmm. those seat brackets man i, I might need to hire you to make me some seat brackets for my seat team i got you it's yeah, just those you, are nice you'd be surprised the thought that went behind that because it was just trial and error <laughs> okay it's sometimes the best though right yep it is yeah man i'm gonna get you one of these shirts real quick also the next time you see my good friend josh we will be interviewing him and his little cobra car i can't wait i talked about him at the on my live interview but this time we're gonna see it hopefully we can drive in it or at least you know hear him do some things with it We'll do it. Vegas. Paul's Hot Rods. That's it, baby. Wish Watt Time was here, but you guys go with Meet Mitch next. Let me get in this shirt. Ah, this is so cool. This is what you do. You talk about filming. <laughs> this is so important now. I would have fixed my hair for this. Hey,
reality is a field trip. All Vegas moving, Vegas strong, all tied in one, baby. Don't forget where we at. Shelby, America. What's going on Vegas? What's the reality? Just took you guys on a field trip. We got the Shelby Las Vegas. Man, this thing is awesome. We hope you enjoyed it. Check out all the cars. Make sure you hit like and subscribe on that YouTube channel. What's the reality, baby? Burn rubber, you dig? Looking at a 40 Ford with an LG original LG one fuel injector motor in out of a Chevy combination of Ford and Chevy together. He's got the early LG one. 
What's up? Chevrolet with a seven hundred R transmission, nine inch Ford, quad track, Mustang two front end. Uh, is it a weekend driver or does it sit in the garage? No, it's a daily driver. Well, I'll drive it two or three times a week. How long have it been complete? Well, that's this is almost a 20 year old build. It was built back in about 99 and 2000. But it's been upgraded uh, over the years. It went to the one piece windshield. Uh, uh, is that engine strong enough to push that big thing? Oh yeah, that uh, right across the scale is at 3,300 pounds. So it's not that heavy. But it's uh, it's just a 300 horse. It's no race car, but it handles nice, nice cruiser. Appreciate your time. You bet. This is definitely a we, selfish builder right here. He don't want nobody riding with him, y'all. He got one seat. One seat. Can't nobody else. If they couldn't, they gotta hold on. And I got the This is the owner here. What are, what are we looking at? What is this? 1991 Nissan 300ZX. So what shape did you get it in? When I got it, it was, let's just say it was still pretty. It had all the paint, the front clip, the hood, full interior. Because this is a 2 plus 2 model. And uh, when they came to the States, they came as 2 plus 2s or 2 plus zeros. But the 2 plus zeros were the only ones that came to the state with the twin turbo option. This one is a naturally aspirated 3 liter V6 VG30. And um, I mean, you can convert it. But the tough thing about this is the turbos are on the underside. Like, it's to the point where they actually made, uh, you know the movie Saw? Yeah. They made a jigsaw meme where it says, let's play a game. Mount the turbos on a VG30 without pulling the motor. Because it's, it's, it's practically impossible. It's a super invasive task. But um, when I joined all the Z32 communities, a lot of people were, they want your car to be a certain way and they want to have input, but they don't want to throw no money or help you build it. Yeah. To which I'm like, okay, well, I'll give you bitches something to cry about. And that's why I did all this. And it's like, yeah, my car is ugly, but it's not at home on jack stand. Time machine, rust to reality, garage. We ended up painting the whole thing because he had a chip on the door. Yeah. So he said, fuck it. Let's go ahead and get his monster popular. So T Monster, we want everybody to know who did my car. Call him T Monster. This is it with no clear. And I kind of, I, I, to be honest with you, I drive it like this. The motherfucker's so pretty. Yeah.
Western Reality. What it do, Trey Skiller, the real dealer. Man, we at the Western Reality yard. Got that 89 Camaro. We're shooting the pearl pink, silver stripes. Put some nice rims on it. This one here, we should be able to get it done in two weeks time. We're gonna deliver it to someone for their birthday. Walking to the yard, it's a mess because we constantly working. I do a lot of things, I coach soccer too. But this is a 55 and a half, short bed, step side, frame off. We're doing a Corvette suspension on it. Uh, we gotta do a huge seat notch, if that's what you wanna call it. Um, we're fusing now the whole front suspension into it. It's out of a 96 Corvette. We're gonna walk you through that, let you see what's going on. And you might get a, a good glimpse at Time Machine. I messed up the fender of the door, so I had to make it better. This is the cab to the 55 and the owner. And we have one of my best partners right here, Vin from Gas. Yes, sir. Genuine Auto Services. Man, come on in here, man. You come always say, don't nobody give it Joe. up to you. Yeah. We got to give it up to him. This is a master fabricator. He's yeah. one of the best I've seen ever. I got to give him his props. He don't ever want to give my props. So I was one of the ones put him on the map with the Lamborghini doors, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> got to take you back and I was playing. But uh, yeah, this Ben man from Gas, luckily to get him over here anyway, cause he's super busy. But we talking about this 55. Yeah, the colors frame is no longer here. The scientists have it. He's doing his work on it. Uh, I kind of don't even want to tell y'all what is going on, but I do, do know this. It's gonna have some big fat Jay-Z lips in the back. And it's gonna be able to sit down real low. And it's gonna be fast as hell. So that's all I'm gonna tell you about Major. Man, this is the lab. Welcome to the lab. This the the basic frame with a little bit of the Corvette suspension but we're gonna take it to a whole nother level. And I'm gonna show y'all some stuff and I know we don't even ever do this. When you see this mark, that lets you know where it's from. So we're taking this, and now we're about to make a big cradle for this so it can sit up and make the frame sit lower because it's gonna be on uh, uh, independent suspension all the way around. This is the front part. Just to let you know, this is real Corvette stuff. This ain't the powder coated stuff that's put on there later. This is really, you can feel the grooves that says Corvette. You can feel Corvette. We're gonna block the frame. Painted silver, charcoal gray, and candy blue accents. I think it's gonna be nice, man. Just to be served. Yeah, spoon on this one of his barn finds right here. And my business partner, my partner, and my good friend ended up getting it. And uh, they gonna give it to his wife. Well, his wife done took it. <laughs> she seen it and already knew what she wanted. So we going with a, uh, basically an onyx black, a really, really clean black. We gonna wet it up real tough, buff it out real good white top i'm hoping she stay with the original guts just kind of give it a little bit of the old feel to it you know what i'm saying the character don't lose everything but yeah this big baby right here and do not get it twisted this thing runs exactly how it's looking it runs great no smoke ever not even when we got out the barn Yeah, we've been taking it apart, man. Getting it ready. The plan is to return it back in three weeks or sooner. So, for us to reality, that's what we do, y'all. That's what we do.
thrust to reality, guess what? Boom. My business partner, my ace Boom Coon. My one and only partner, Lynn, about to get this other barn find, Coupe de Ville Cadillac, y'all, in Vegas. Y'all about to come in here and see it. First time I started it. I'm hoping it do like the other car, the other truck did. So let's go ahead and check this thing out. Doing it again. What's up? Rest of reality, baby. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. You're gonna crank it. It's on the top of the left corner. Lights are on. Yeah, he ready to go. Let's go and see what he can do, man. We're gonna go ahead and put that old school. Mm -hmm. You know, y'all don't see keys like this no more. Y'all kids got push button shit, shit you can have in your pocket. This is a real key. All original. Oh man, that car is... What kind of motor do you have in here? Stock, 348. Three, three what? 348. Wow, okay. Yeah, anyway, stick. Talk. We're gonna talk about this one tomorrow. Stick in the floor? Yeah, Saturday. Saturday. stick on. Like I, I said, that's Saturday. why he's spinning that motherfucker. Oh yeah, like I said, Saturday I bring him out and I actually... Where you find this baby at, man? My brother had found him for me up in California. Something like 10 years. Shit, 10 years. Oh, wow. 12 it. years. I've had it in a while. Yeah. That's been my dream ever since I was like 11 years old. You got a big ass window, bro. Yeah. Looks like a windshield. Damn. Bigger than most windshields. Man. That's crazy. Valve cover shape, bro. <laughs> that's so you. cool. That's GM's first that big so block, cool. actually. You see, that's not what we're talking about. Right. GM's first big block. Talking about the Chevy valve covers. The motor Chevy it. sign in there. I Them things it. probably cost some money, huh? The valve covers? You know what? Because there ain't no 409s left, the 348s, depending on who you're getting them from, 
I was gonna go five, six, seven grand for rebuilds. I could just rebuildable motors. I could tell because as many motors I have looked at, no, it's I ain't seen that on too many. A lot of 58s and 59s and 60s have them. Like a lot of people put those in them with the, the tri-powers. I'm, I'm not a fan of the tri-power setup. It's, people do it because they're rare, but they're rare because everybody back in the 60s took them off and threw them in the garbage. That's why they're rare. They're not rare because they were rare to begin with. It's just, they sucked. Yeah. So everybody stuck four barrel single manifolds on them and tossed that shit. Give me a four barrel any day. <laughs> Two of these things. All original. I love this, right? It's you too. Yeah. So you say you ain't gonna finish it. You like you like no, I ain't. You like the old look. Give me what he gave you. Boy, there ain't no confusing who's cars are, you know. Yeah. Look at the guy that drives it. Like, like this. Look, I, mean, I drive my shit. Yeah. yeah, I drive it. Like, no, it look it looks like a good car, but no, you don't even want to fix up just one of them. No, it's for you. Why? I fix them up for everybody else. Okay. I like beating the shit out of my car. I, I know that. it sounds funny. Like, ah, uh, you should paint them. And no, funny shit though. When I was a kid growing up, all the all the really good mechanics, their cars was kind of like kind of crazy. Oh yeah. But they wouldn't pull them up in the hottest stuff. You know what I mean? Like, oh, mm, this one would go to him. No, they was their cars wouldn't even look that good. But what's funny about all that is. It took time to catch up to me and my family. Like we didn't, dude, I'm a 90s kid, you know. So you already know, all the people that had the money, they was already on datings and low riding. Right. And right. dude, we bought what we could buy. We fixed up what we could afford to fix up. And we used to get shit for it. They're like, man, paint that car and do this. I'm like, this is what I drive, I can't. So it took all that time to now for it to be called patina, which I fucking hate that word. I hate the word patina. It ain't patina, the shit just ain't been touched. Right. I've been this guy, we've been this we've been this way our entire lives. It just took time to finally catch him and be like, alright, you guys are cool now. Right, right. But I just like my shit the way it is. I've I, always been that guy. I can dig it, man. I've always had white walls on my car. You ever gonna have rims? I had a set of datings one time and that was just to prove a point that I didn't care. And I blew this folks up on purpose. So I'm like <laughs> my cars are always slammed, they always got the stock wheels on. It's just that's how you get that. You are who you are. I, I can guess. dig it. I can dig it, man. So, so with, it, with, it, with, it, with you saying that, I'm going to look at this car. It's still a, a nice piece of jewelry to me. Obviously, you like it, too. Is it easy to buy this car from? Absolutely not. Somebody tried last week. It's not for sale. I love it. It's not for sale. It. <laughs> like, I love it. Just because it looks like this doesn't mean I'm not it into it. It has nothing to do with the car. It's the story behind the car. Like... There's more than just two Impala sitting here. This is something I've wanted my entire life. Nice. Like, that's a long time, and they would come, and they would pass, and I couldn't get them, and like yeah, I said- I it, totally you, understand that. You grow up a certain way, certain things are just out of your reach, you know, so. Bro, I totally understand. Yeah. Even, even to right now, the, the 69 truck, I never thought I would have one that popped up. Opportunity was perfect, so I grabbed it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I've always wanted one, but I never thought I could get it. I was like, I just see them, and, I was nice this truck. <laughs> like once I got this, I was like, I'm done with cars. And then this one showed up, I was just like, ah. <laughs> so this is cool as hell. You no, know, somebody came in last week and I can't do it. Like So even if they drop it on the hood, man, he go nice digit. I don't need it. Like I struggled my whole life, I'm cool. So I respect that. I respect that. Press to reality. like this no more man. More drivers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the boys the best feeling in the world jumping in this thing man. Oh. This car game call. I know. This car game call. I'm not trying to negotiate. I'm not trying to man this is what it's gonna cost. This is what you need, you know. And it's to a point now where people even come get information from you, bro, and then run it to the next person to try to 
yeah, you know, they're going to use your game. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and run over here to somebody else to do it for, you know, for pennies on a dollar. Yes, sir. Man, we ain't even giving them information. It's business. It's short. So if I know this guy over here selling this for $500, I know he's selling it for $500. Yeah, I'm gonna come in at four seven. Cause I got that fucking little twenty five dollars. Man, motherfuckers will jump ship. It ain't no loyalty in this shit. Motherfuckers will jump ship over five bucks. Five this dollars. dude up here gonna be five bucks cheaper. Yeah. And they're, they're gonna run over here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not probably get fucked and then try to come back to you. Oh man, I took it. Well, man, well we gotta go over somebody else's shit. It's more money. More money, man. Yes, sir. It's just a game, bro. This 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 card game called. I know. This card game mm-hmm. called. Been changing the game. The motherfuckers wasn't riding around big wheels. This is the first motherfucker that had 24s on the G body. Right. Niggas wasn't doing that right. shit. Just, just, I just think with the funny stuff. Right. But it's always been them type of people who never put food on my table anyway. I've been all right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Without the, without the, without the extra shit. Right. And every time I go against the game and try to prove a point, prove a point to help a motherfucker, I always want to bite me in the ass anyway. So just, yeah, just stay over there. Take it to a whole for myself, yeah, I got a uh, 64 Impala SS convertible I'm building. Uh, man, I, I sold my last one and I ain't been right since. Is that the uh, orange one? The yellow. Yeah, yeah the yellow one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I got, I got, I, I ended up uh, getting rid of that. I got another one. And I was just about to ask but I got, I got another one and, uh, and I was, I was beginning to build that and I ended up selling that to uh, Pro Boxer, Kayla Plant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I ended up That's that green one. The green one. Okay. Yeah, so that was my car and uh um, I ended up selling it to him and then ended up building it for him. So I sold the car and built it for him. But nice. that was that was that was my car then so I'm like, man, I want me another sixty four. So I wanted to find me another one uh out of Albuquerque and uh Got that one, so that's what that's that's what I'm on right now. That's what I'm that's what I'm dealing with right now. I'm I'm, I'm building I'm building on that right now, and uh, I can't I can't let this one go. But yeah, you're gonna be clean. Is he, it, is he gonna be cut? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah was yeah. the one that Caleb was he cut to? Caleb wasn't cut. It was gonna be cut, but yeah, he didn't. Uh, he he was like he wanted to get on the streets. He said he was gonna bring it back during the winter time for us to cut it. So okay. Shout out to Caleb Plant. Absolutely. It's kind of like. He is my boy, man. I've had love for him ever. He reminds me of George. The dude reminds me of George so much. Yeah, Black Zords. Get it done. Get yeah. it done. TJ, shout out to my guy TJ at the Half Customs. Love TJ. TJ, my guy. Like, we go, we go back to Spring did. Mountain. Oh, man. Yeah, oh, no, that's my child, guy. Childhood. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Spring Mountain Youth Camp. You know what I'm saying? Breaking into classrooms, youth fun before everybody got there. Yeah, <laughs> my guy. Solid dude. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Bruh. So, but that lets me know that the only reason you over here fucking with me is because you got to. A lot of motherfuckers on me won't fuck with you just because they like to or just because they like you. Right. They right. got to. Right. It might be something that you have that they can't get nowhere else at that time. That's true. They got to fuck with you. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So that be the, that be the shit about shit, bro. Like, motherfucker, you don't fuck with me gen- genuinely all the time. Motherfucker, don't come around here when you just need a nigga because, you know what I'm saying? Fuck that fast head about me is. I changed. My nigga, I done, I done not had a dollar in my pocket, bro. What? Can't go and get a motherfucking 99 cent burger from Wendy's. You know what I'm saying? And they got to have a million dollars. You know what I'm saying? My nigga, you'll never know what the fuck I got. Because I'm the same nigga. I don't change. Same here, right? Same. Same. You, we just, same, you we know just, what I'm saying? We just talked we just, about we this. Probably. It's, 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 that's just, you know what I'm saying? But my nigga, and that's why they continue to be blessed. Because the yeah. nigga ain't on no. Yeah. Probably a nigga ain't running around here. But could. But could. And no cap. But no cap. Yeah, no cap. Motherfucker really do that shit. They, they, In hey, real life. It's funny though, cause like, being I, I know, like, how, how can I say it? Being in the lifestyle that I've lived, I can always tell when a dude is doing good. You know what I'm saying? I can tell. Even if he carried like us. Right. Like, he, it just be his pep in his step. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he high. He high. He he high. high. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now on the flip side, you still gonna be your cool self. Yeah. But it'll be a little bit different, like you thinking more or something, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the reason I'm saying what I'm saying is we still don't take it out on other by anybody yeah. else. Absolutely. If the money lower, if the money higher. I mean, I'll look at you the same, the same way. I look at you the same way. I respect them. I, I respect the motherfucker for who they are, bro. Yeah, I respect them. I'ma treat a motherfucker with a million dollars the same way I treat a motherfucker with two dollars. Cause that's just me, bro. I'm not gonna yeah. I'm not gonna look down on the motherfucker, oh broke ass nigga, like 
You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I don't, I don't rock like that. You know what I'm saying? That's just, that, that just, humble. Mean, motherfucker humble and genuine. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, it just, it, man, motherfucker's crazy. But, uh, homie, I got a couple about that to have some cash. And them niggas like, I'm like, damn, I mean, you know, whoa, why not? You know, man, you can Super say you got new. it now. Super oh, you new. got it now, huh? Right hand of God, bro. He made some shit. This was 10 years before. Right? Then they started making a suspension, you know, that you could buy the, yeah. the, the shit. Bro, we had ordered some shit for this guy. It came in. Swear to God, it was the exact same shit this fool made 10 years before. Identical. Like, man, that's, you made that shit 10 years ago from scratch. Yeah, well, 15. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? Like, identical though. Like, if I would have got that patent, a motherfucker could have been rich. Right, you selling that shit all over Like, bro, this is like same shit you made 10, 12 years ago for the fucking one joint. You know what I'm saying? So, homie, motherfuckers really be ahead of their time on some shit, bro. Like, it, it's like. You went to school to learn how to live? I taught myself. Um, like I was telling uh, him uh, last night. Uh, I, I call him my brother because we went through this shit we're, just like family. We're on right now, wife. I had moved to Vegas after he did, and he had passed away. And uh, shit, he kind of left me here. Like me and Rick, I knew Rick what 38 days. Yeah. You know, and he kind of just passed away suddenly. And uh, shit, I had a choice: go back to where I was from or stick it out. And shit, I felt like uh, there was no reason for me to leave. You yeah. know, I had to stay. You know. Damn. True <laughs> story. Yeah, that's no fabrication. That's a true story right there. So I told him, like, that passed away. He's the new car suit. <clears throat> yeah, George. Okay. Yeah, that's how I met Dave. Yep. George. And, uh, uh, it's funny. George walked in the shop one day, fucking the box, the box of parts, and uh, I sold him some parts. And he's like, man, I'm, I'm down here from California. I moved down here from California, man. He said, uh, at the time, I wasn't even doing fabrication. I was, I was just selling parts. I was just tricking, tricking. I sell parts, uh, you know. And uh, you guys doing fabrication? Nah, I don't do no fabrication. He's like, well, man, I fabricate. You, know? you see me do? You like that? You know what I'm saying? I'm more confident. You know what I'm saying? Part. You like, oh, or you know? And homie, so he, he well, let me show you. He said, man, I got, I had a shop in uh in Santa Rosa. I'm like, where? He's like, yeah. So you know, he go outside, he get his book and shit. He bring in a book. He's like, man, I do. You know, so he's showing me fucking all these cars and shit, monster lockups and fabrication. And fucking, I'm like, oh, all right, so. He actually opened up the door for me to do fabrication. Yeah. So I was like, fuck it, man. I, fuck it, I'll give it a whirl, you know what I'm saying? And homie, we motherfucking was rocking for a few months. Family got killed on some, on some bullshit. Oh. Yeah, at the fucking, the, the, the joint, at the fucking swap meet the one year. What was that, 2004? 2004. 2004, 2004, 2004. at the fucking uh, shit, the swap meet uh, up there at the, um, Remember at the Rancho Swap Meet, all those people got killed? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and fucking, uh, he got caught in a crossfire, some motherfucking shooting, and homie, he, you know. And, uh, shit, I didn't know Dave, really. You know, Dave had only been there maybe three, four weeks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, I asked him, I said, man, look, if you want to go back home, I understand, because George is your man. You know what I'm saying? And you all know me to be like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know? And he's like, man. Damn, fuck it. We've been rocking ever since. Well, I couldn't weld to save my life. Yeah. I couldn't. A week before he passed, I tried to weld and he was clowning. He's like, fool, that looks like popcorn. I'm like, man, fuck you. Yeah. You know? That's, dude, we used to just, man, I missed the dude. But yeah, it was like he passed. I felt, what kind of a dishonor would it be for him to, you know, run? 